Estes. Welcome back to Hartford, Connecticut. Translation, hit the button on Facebook. We're here, round 11, about to bring you some action. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm all flabbergasted now. You, Go you ahead, John. Okay, well, <laughs> we, we got a pretty exciting matchup for y'all. It's a variation of something that we saw yesterday where we've got Hitmonchan versus Zorark round two. You know, that's the thing. You're down, you're, but you're not out. We saw Hitmonchan not quite get to the finish line last time. Yep. Still has a pretty solid chance against Zorark, though. And it looks like we've got a different variation of the deck this time around, whereas Hitmonchan, hit and run, doesn't really change that much other than maybe a single copy or two of different cards. Here, we've got a Zorark counters deck, and it looks like we just got decklists on it, so maybe we can investigate the specifics of those counters right now. And actually, you know what? It looks like we have a Hitmonchan mirror. I apologize to everybody, but this should be pretty interesting. So we have a Hitmonchan mirror match. So we're going to be seeing lots of hit and run right now. Going down the list, what do you see for... Let's see. Let's Actually, you know what? I see... Okay, it, I apologize, everybody. It looks like there was an additional mix-up here. It looks like this was the list for our backup match. We have a list for Wesley Tam right now, who is playing Hitmonchan, and we have Jason here up on the table, who is playing Zorart counters. So we'll get to find out some of those counters and those specific copy inclusions as soon as we get the deck list for Jason soon. However, it gives him a lot of options, a lot to work with. What do you think, Jeff? Uh, I, th I really do think I want to see I want to see Hitmonchan get the win here. Though I think he has a lot of uh, chances here because of that fighting weakness. Uh, however, you know counters always have a plan, always have a plan for any situation here. So we'll see how it pans out for Jason. Yeah, and you know what? I already like one thing of Jason's list that I have not seen that much in Zorark counters or Zorark list in general is that copy of Macargo. So a spiritual successor to the original Macargo card all the way back in 2004, 2005 from the Deoxys expansion with its smooth over ability letting you search your deck for a card to put on the top after shuffling up your deck effectively comboing perfectly with trade giving you a selection every single turn so it's basically just a computer search every turn Absolutely here. We do see an end on Wesley's side right now. Energy to the active Hitmonchan with a muscle band or Rangaroo to the bin or to the uh, bench. And then gonna end and draw equal to your prize count. Uh, do see another Waba foot here come to the bench. And just hard retreat, bring the Wob to active. I love this play um, here. And go on and pass over to Jason's side. Yeah, and y you know, I mean, I, I don't think I'm quite as excited about that. I mean, I, I certainly get the logic, and I think it's an okay decision. I think it might even be the best one here. But in terms of that retreat into the Wob effect, Tapu Lele is the main ability this turn that Jason's using. There's no question about it. I mean, maybe something like okay. a tech Pokemon might factor in, maybe a Shaman, something to that effect. So there's definitely a solid benefit in bringing up the Wobbuffet to frustrate Jason a little bit. But that main play, the big play that all players map out so often with Zoroark GX decks, getting that Tapu Lele into play, searching with Wonder Tag for the Bridget supporter card to get everything set up that is an impacted by by barricade i'll uh, look here he does grab two zerua and the shaman from shining legends gonna have that rally back uh attack there to be able to uh attack for 30 base but if a pokemon was knocked out the previous turn does an additional 90 damage yeah and is it a, a selection in this matchup i think it's a pretty good call because it's going to be able to respond pretty easily to any knockouts there might be it actually has pretty solid math to knock out a Wobbuffet with the Revenge knockout. So all in all, I, I think, and plus it's a non-EX, non-GX Pokemon that can come up. I'm excited to see what it can do here. Unfortunately, it's a little too frail, so that might be easier said than done to actually see much of an impact with the Shaman, but it could at the very least keep up one prize for one prize knockouts. So we do have Jason's list here, and one thing I wanted to notice that's actually really interesting, uh, given that he plays the Macargo line as well, he does not play the Ditto Prisms uh, card in his deck. Yeah, and that's actually kind of surprising because Ditto Prism Star has a ton of variety, a ton of options in terms of what you can do, and it can make a pretty techy, pretty countery deck even more techy and countery, but here Jason decided just to say, you know what, I'm not really worried about 
a fifth Zoro. I'm not really worried about having another out to Slugma. I'm just okay with the list the way that it is. Absolutely here. So we do see Zorark GX in the active spot. Jace is also eyeing down another Zorark GX to uh, start using that trade ability to get his strategy going here. Um, looks like he did an Ultra Ball discarding what looks to be the Dowsing Machine in the Pokemon Communication to get to the Zorark. Double Colorless coming to the active spot here. Going to set up that right as beating attack, doing 20 times the number of Pokemon he has in his field and in play. And a clean Sycamore. No high five there, though. That's right. Unfor yep. That's a fun little thing that players do sometimes is that if they have no cards in their hand, they play a Professor Sycamore or Professor Juniper. They give the other person a high five. But at any rate, you know what? Jason's got a clean hand without trade due to the Bide Barricade. Slight risk of not being able to hit the knockout here, but he gets a Mr. Mime Plasma Freeze to put on the bench and scores a clean 120. We do see the Enhanced Hammer also discarding that strong energy that was on the Hitmonchan. Beast energy off the top deck. Hitmonchan is not an Ultra Beast, so won't get much mileage out of that one there. However, he can find an energy here. He still can perform hit and run for a massive amount of damage. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, b between Shrine of Punishment, the Muscle Band, and a strong energy if he hits that. He does have he teammates. Yeah, and he's got teammates, so he's basically able to get just about the right combo of cards. The only question is, can he set up a combination of cards that allows him to get a one-shot knockout here? I'm not really seeing that too much, well, but... So let's 30, 50, and then with the strong energy, it'll be 70. 70 times 2 right now will be 140. You just throw one Diancy in there. One Di yeah, one Diancy might be able to help make the difference here. But still won't be a chance to get a knockout there. 30, 50, 70, 90, 180 there at most. Shrine will be 190. So it'll take some ticks there eventually to get KO'd. Um, but I'm sure Jason will be ready with either an Acerola um, to bring that Zork back to hand. So I, th I think it's probably going to grab the energy for sure. And then a Verse Seeker or um, another Draw Sport for next turn to help him get some more Pokemon out. Because right now, he only has that one hit much in. Oh, for sure. And right now, I'm curious to see what Jason's approach will be here if one of these Zoraks gets knocked out. I, I think it definitely helps that they're both bulky enough to handle most hits that might come their way. Like you were saying earlier, the Shrine of Punishment ticks are really, really painful over a long period of time. But, you know, Zorak decks, they run counters. They run counter stadiums, ways to deal with Shrine of Punishment, ways to get around it now. Returning to Jason's list here just really quick, it seems like the main non-EX, non-GX counter that he will be relying on is that Shaman. So the Shaman from Shining Legends, it's trying to get knockouts in response to knockouts scored by Wesley. So that hasn't happened this turn. So I think in Wesley's favor, it's actually pretty helpful to have that going. But Jason's still getting knockouts here. He's at least going to... Okay, and we have a... Double check of the math on the board, making sure everything's right. Yeah, it should be what 30, and 50, 70, 140 yeah, plus try 150. I, 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 I think they might. I, I think they might. Well, they, I think they had a brief check to make sure everything was okay. But it is, and we're back to the. Yep, and there you go, yep. right on cue. That Acerola, bringing the whole line back to the hand for Jason, healing up that Zor Zorark now a little Zerua, but keeping things going strong. And the, and we get a knockout here, but. A nice little thing about the core combo of Hitmonchan hit, hitting and running for Bide Barricade is that Jason would have loved to have a counter stadium there, a way to deal with that Shrine of Punishment. But because of the Bide Barricade, he can't combo trades the way he would normally like to. And as a result, he's just stuck taking more damage. And I think eventually Wesley's going to be able to wear him out. Here's a big thing here as well is that with that tick damage from Shrine, going to put him down to 190. So if Wesley can get uh, on the board that Diancy, uh, to do that damage modifier, the K, the, the attack from Hitmonchan, and uh, uh, extra damage from Shrine will knock out the active Zorak going into in, in Jason's turn. So let's see if he can get pull up those pieces. And there's an Ultra Ball right there if you wanted to do so. And a Diancy clean, so yep. he will not even need to Ultra Ball for it. Uh, an additional Shrine as well. Uh, but we'd like to probably see another Wobbuffet here um, to be able to delay that, str that trade uh, on Jason's side. And cute little thing in Wesley's hand right now, not saying it's relevant, but he does play a single copy of Shaman Shining Legends himself. So at some point, if he's able to hit the right card combination, and if we have the ex well, never mind, we have it discarded. <laughs> but we might we might see it happen later there's on. Rest stretchers in the list. There's multiple yeah. rest stretchers, a way to recover back those items here. Ultra Ball though, discarding Shaman and another kind of punishment, uh, and he's going to be searching his card for any Pokemon to place in his hand. 
Yeah, and the discard for that Shrine of Punishment is actually a little painful because by going down a stadium, I think Jason eventually when he draws into the cards that he needs will have an easier time winning the overall stadium war. And mm -hmm. by stadium war, I mean whoever ultimately ends up with their stadium in play in the late game. Usually the player who plays their stadium first, they're usually going to lose that stadium war if they don't run as many counters as their opponent does. But of course, because Shrine of Punishment is literally a damaging stadium, you need to put that into play first a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Fully agree there. So he ended up Ultra Ball and grab another Wobba Foot here for that Bide Barricade ability. Um, do not have a Flow Stone on it just yet here. So he's going to hit and run, take the knockout through the Shrine of Punishment damage, and promote Wobba Foot with that Bide Barricade. Jason's turn here does top deck and massive hand right now. He does have another Zorg he can't evolve here from the previous Acerola. Um, and he does have the double close attachment here. So what supporter is he going to look at here without having access to trade? Yeah, he he's definitely eyeing that VS Seeker right now. That's the card he's flipping around. It lets you search your discard pile for a supporter to put back. So uh, He's also got the option to play that N, and I mean, we, we see that right now with his body language. Eventually decides to commit to that N, and I certainly respect the play right there, being able to disrupt Wesley's hand mm -hmm. to great effect, and at the same time, maybe give himself an out, especially to countering that shrine. That is going to be Jason's end game right now, is finding some way to bop that shrine. Another thing to keep in mind here, Jason does run on one of count of counter catcher as well. So if he could find that here and take the knockout on this Himachan. Oh, and he's got the sky field and, and, and a field bump, blower. I would almost say, would, wouldn't the field baby blower to play right now versus the sky field? I, yeah, I agree with you. I think there's a benefit in being able to do that, specifically because of what we just saw, which was getting rid of the muscle band. Now, the losing the losing the muscle band might hurt what uh, Jason in the long run because if Wesley has a choice band, then yep. he'll get even more damage. But that's really unlikely, especially since Wesley's running a single copy of the card in his list. But you know what? We could be proven wrong. We might be able to see a choice band. No, I definitely, pop up on the board. I definitely agree with that there as well because the, now he has a pivot point with this flowstone on the Oringaru. Um So maybe feel blowing out Oringaru. While the Hitmachan would have done a lot of damage, uh, there would have been no pivot point for him to go to with the with such a thin hand from the short end. Um, in this turn right now, he did promote the Oringaru with the flowstone, so he will have free retreat and uh, see what Shrine, Karina, and a Verse Seeker and Guzma. So he has a lot of different options here. Could teammates. Uh, could uh, Sycamore for additional cards, could Karina for additional Pokemon. Yep, and so while Wesley's Shrine of Punishment damage has made a huge difference in this game, at the end of the day, going back to the Stadium War, it looks like Jason's going to be able to lock that one up. Now, he needs to actually win the real game itself, but in terms of this little micro battle over the greater war in this match, he's in a better position, at least because of that now. That said, it looks like Wesley's positioning himself in a great spot to be able to get just a ton of damage this turn with that Karina, and he's eyeing the choice band. We might yep, see... Yep, that's exact yeah, knockout. Yeah, we, and we're seeing that bump of the muscle band come back to haunt Jason. I see his line of logic, and I think that that was a good play. It's just there was that shot of Karina yep. or a hard draw of choice band coming into play, and that's what happened here. Yep, that would happen. Uh, was he able to take full advantage of that of the field blower on the muscle band? And I, I still want to say, I mean, while he, Wesley did have the pieces there, um, even with teammates, he still would have got there. Uh, it's just tough to say that now with the flow still active here. Hitmonchan is going to be promoted here. Still has Verse Seeker his hand to do a world of riches the following turn. And that'll be knockout through this round of punishment. 30, 50, 80, 100, Diancy, 200. Yep. Perfect with match, the weakness. just like he said. And then Shrine of Punishment going to do that easy 210. Hitmonchan proving its worth here in this Zork matchup. Absolutely right now. And we've got a I – I'm, I'm taking a peek here at Jason's hand. I don't see a whole lot of great – options there i mean there's the teammates obviously so if he's able to change something solid with that teammates i think that's going to make a big difference there's uh, the counter catcher here and he did trade away the teammates so but counter catcher big here taking out the, the big threat right now on wesley's side however wesley does have a teammate of his own if jason is not able to end and, and ops to play gladiator yeah and not a whole lot of options here off that so off that trade so it looks like He's just got to keep himself going in the game. It certainly helps that Wesley only runs a single copy of that choice band. But now at this point, 
I'm feeling a little anxious if I'm Jason because in addition to this knockout here, he's going to need to get two more without exposing himself to one of his, any of his Pokemon getting knocked out because that's a lot of damage. Uh, Gladiator right now, just to kind of let you guys know at home what the card does, it lets you look at your prize cards and take one of the prize cards. However, in trade, put the Gladiator back in his respective spot and shuffle those surprises around. And it looks like he actually pulled all uh, the gliding out of the prizes here. Kartana coming down here. Uh, Going to use that slice off ability to take off a special energy anywhere on Jason's side of the board. And opts to take off that double colorless on the active Zoroark. And then plays teammates. That's it. Teammates yep. for the Prism for Energy. For the GX attack. Blade GX. Last prize. And it looks like we've got a game one win for Wesley right now. So I'm thinking about possibilities that Jason could do in terms of being able to make a comeback in the next game. He mm -hmm. doesn't have quite as many choices the way that some of the other Zoro Garp players might have in this matchup. We don't see that bodybuilding dumbbells and the trash Lanch comboing to great effect, being able to wall Hitmonchan hits the way that it does. Yep. But we still see that Shaman and Counter Energy combo being relevant. We still see Energy Denial like Faba having the potential to be relevant as well. Yep. Uh, definitely there's a lot of uh, outs in Jason's deck. However, Wesley was able to hit pinnacle turns there. And I think the key point you want to make is is where that field blower on that muscle band completely turned the tide for, for Jason there at that point there. Because then Wesley was able to the following turn. Karina, choice band, shrine, take the knockout on the Zorak there in one swing. And nothing else to respond for on Jason's side at that point. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I think one thing that might be a little difficult to read in some of these Hitmonchan lists is that I've seen a wide variety of splits in terms of what kind of muscle band you run and what mm -hmm. kind of choice band you run. So it makes it really difficult to figure out the precise combo and balance of those two tools. So Jason was going into this match with imperfect knowledge about Wesley's list. Yep. Regardless of whatever might have been the absolute perfect play one way or the other, that's water under the bridge. Now Jason knows that both of those cards are present. And because both of those cards are present, he can plan for them accordingly and have a much better showing the second game. All right, well, looks like the players are going into action right now here for game two. Jason going first. Just shaming in an active spot right now. And let's see he plays a Bridget. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, uh, and the Shaman Star definitely not that good, but keep in mind he has the hard copy of Bridget in play right now. Doesn't even need to bench a Tapu Lele GX, so he's not wasting resources. And we might even see a bit of a benefit here for Jason being able to evacuate that Shaman at some point with Sky Return, although in terms of tempo, that play is a slower decision if he opts to go for that. So mm -hmm. it would be a little risky to do that and give Wesley more time to set up. I fully agree there. We do see uh, after the pass to Jason's side, Wesley starts his turn now, has the antsy to the bench, um, and plays Nest Ball. Search deck for any basic Pokemon and place it directly to your bench. So any abilities for that Pokemon that uh, you know, you know, read, play from hand are going to be nullified. Let me see this first turn deck search. All important, being able to make sure you have all of your important cards there accounted for, nothing too important in the prizes. And if you do have a prize, try to plan appropriately. But pretty straightforward play otherwise with that nest ball for a Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan here. Solo has not played a supporter just yet here. It's interesting. We want to see a Karina. Um, let's see what he has in hand. We see Guzma, Escape Rope. And I like this play. It's a really cute way to be able to get his setup going, get out of the active position, and not risk not hitting a float stone. So, oh, and he's well, he's got the he's got the computer search. So if he wants to attack, he can. But that would have been pretty rough if all he had was the beast energy. He did hit the strong energy as well. The last card here. Uh, to note, his one rescue stretcher was discarded off of that juniper play right now. But we do see strong energy, muscle band, plus the ants. He's going to be an easy, this easy knockout on that poor little slug mug. Dude, this punch is a, the ground. This is about a perfect start for Wesley right now. I I mean, and the only thing that I might wish that I had if I were on Wesley's side right now is like some sort of floatstone in hand, but he's got the computer search, yep. which is almost as good. Computer search in hand. Going to take the knockout here on Slugma. One for one trade. Shaman being promoted. So we're probably going to see a sky return here shortly. Um, looks like he draws an Oracorio, him being Jason, and Verse Seeker coming down. Is he going to repeat Bridget? Yes, he it is. Looks like it. Cute little flavor thing I want to point out right now is that Jason runs different 
rarities and versions of the VS Seeker card. Keep in mind, this card's been around since 2004, and what he just played was just about one of the oldest copies, one of the rarest copies the of the fire card. Fire, red, leaf, green version of this of the card? Yeah, yep. yeah. It, but the neat thing, and there's actually a s relevant skill element of doing that, is that without even searching your deck, it helps you in some ways being able to take account for how many you might have. Because if you mulligan, if you have no b Pokemon in your hand, or excuse me, if you have a situation where you have one, then you can figure it out based off of the rarity. So if you see, for example, multiple draws and you see that multiple are accounted for, you know that there are others there. So super long story short, it makes accounting for your cards that are prized a little bit easier. Yeah, absolutely there. Uh, he did bridge it for what looks to be uh, another Zerua and Shaman and a Mr. Mime, interesting enough to prevent that bench damage here. But on into Wesley's turn, he does grab the Guzma and is going to take this nice little chip knockouts on these Zeruas here. Yeah, and there's a domino effect with knocking out Zeruas because the more that go away, the fewer trades that are going to get pulled off later, the fewer opportunities to be able to get more cards. And with by Barricade, that's easier said than done. But with cards like Countercatcher, with like Guzma to get by Barricade out of the active position, that's going to make a big difference for Jason. So we do see Naka on Zerua here. Countercatcher on Jason's side. We're going to finally see potentially this rally back play. Um, from from Shaman, and Shaman as it is, Shaman going to set up. Yep, basically, Shaman doing just about everything he needs it to do right now, except getting that copy of the counter energy. So we do see a Tapu Lele come down here. Going to wonder tag and grab any supporter out of his deck. Ops to grab a teammate here. Going to grab any two cars. Avenger State, we're going to see that counter energy come down here mm -hmm. for the knockout. One thing to note also with the Shaman, uh, it does. Oh, never mind. I'll, I'm, this is twice now where I assume flying type Pokemon would resist flight, uh, fighting here, and Shaman does not resist fighting. Uh, so, two there. Two there. Uh, although, because of how completely broken Wesley's starting hand was, I don't really feel even if there was a 20 fighting resistance, that would be too relevant because it would just blow up the Shaman, anyways. Although. I mean, granted, Wesley would have to draw all the exact same cards that he's just about to lose, but you see my point. Absolutely there. Ultra Ball going to, to the bin right now, discarding that Macargo, uh, the partner of the Slug Mud that was previously knocked out, as well as Tapu Lele GX, going to try to grab himself another Zerua. But still, it's at least the, what, the third turn now for Jason, there are no Zorak GX. That's right. No Zorak GX at all. No Zorak GX to be able to deal damage, being able to draw cards with that trade ability. So... Oh, he has kind of a rough hand spot. Too. Yeah, so he can chain that. Oh, he man, he has teammates, computer search. I think that's another Hitmonchan already in his hand. So he has all these different pieces right now all yep. ready to go. And even if he needed four cards to pull off, whatever the perfect combo would be here. Oh, Is he, he just topped, he topped, he topped, topped full, a couple of stone. Okay, he topped that couple of stone, has the teammates, and he has a Hitmonchan in hand. Now, the one thing with, his, with the teammates is going to be able to grab energy, muscle band possibly here, or, or strong energy, muscle band. 30, 50, 70, easy knockout on the Shaman here. Plus, he could just retreat into uh, and pivot back to the Rangaroo or the Wob again here. With look, because he still has computer switch a hand and grab another float stone. A lot of different combinations here. He opts to grab the basic fighting. Still be able to knock out because of uh, Princess's cheer on um, Diancy's ability. But his Wes is getting everything. Yeah, and there is actually a point where you have to be careful when you have everything, which is. Do you get too greedy? And you got to make sure that what you're doing with cards like teammates. So say, I mean, we have the Floatstone, Computer Search, Hitmonchan all in hand starting this turn. Now we have the teammates. So if Wesley is now in a position where he has the luxury to get cards for future turns, then he doesn't want to mess himself up and maybe not get the right card for a later turn. So we do see here Fighting Energy coming down to the Hitmonchan on bench, plus Muscle Band. Going to do that base 50, but thanks to Diancy here, yep. bumps it up to another 20 damage, hitting an easy 70 HP yes, on Shaman. Yes, sir, and you were just talking about this earlier because that Shaman is grounded. It doesn't have a Fighting Resistance. It is stuck in a situation where it has no Fighting Resistance, so that's a perfect clean 70 HP knockout. But we do see here going to Jason's side here. He has a big bench, as does Wesley. Culver's here. Going to draw a, po a card for every Pokemon on your bench. And it's going to be a nice 11 cards going to Jason's hands. And with the Oracorio going into the active position, I'm really curious to see if Jason goes on the offensive with that card. So he's got two types of dances with that Oracorio. Revelation Dance to be able to 
deal damage if there's a stadium card in play, which there obviously is, or Supernatural Dance to deal one damage counter for each Pokemon in your opponent's discard pile. Yeah. Neither of those are going to be too impactful right now, but could be relevant. Or a Quirio coming to the party, it's just which music is going to play for it here. Um, I want to say it's probably going to uh, attack here uh, to do the Revelation Dance, I would say, to do 60 damage at least to the Wob. Uh, but we could just see a Supernatural Dance depending on how many Pokemon are in the discard pile. Yep, and you called it right on cue, that Revelation Dance for 60 damage to the Wobbuffet. Passing over now to Wesley's turn, he did top deck the Floatstone. So, again, hitting key pieces here for this matchup. Going to be able to pivot easily off this Wobbuffet. Yeah, although it's a, it, it is a big question if Wesley could score the knockout here on that Oracorio without costing too many resources due to that computer search. But I think that... Wesley could also just go for another cheap knockout if he wanted to. I want to note one little thing that I kind of noticed here from Jason's side. So earlier in the game, we kind of questioned him benching that Mr. Mime, kind of irrelevant in this matchup here. But what we're going to see here is if Wesley does bump uh, the Sky Field with the Shrine of Punishment, Wesley can hear, clear each of those GX Pokemon off of his side of the board because of that stadium bump, Sky Field no longer allowing eight bench, and he's going to go to five bench. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And so without any easy, cheap knockouts other than maybe Zorart, Jason's in uh, actually a better position once that, that gets bumped and those GX EX Pokemon go away. And again, right on cue, Jason is just like, you know what, let's get, get rid of those. And actually, you know, you can't see it right now, but Jeff did a little bit of a like, hey, what's up motion right now? As if, hey, you know what, I called it, I read it, <laughs> and everybody can see it right now. Like, those EXs, those GXs are gone. They're gone, buddy. Strata Pinscher coming down here. Got to spread damage to those GX Pokemon that are no longer there. However, those Zoruas do turn into Zor GXs. We'll be able to apply that pressure. Hit my Chan, though, still able to hit this Oracorio and hit it for. I think Oracorio does have the resistance here. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Although, uh, you know what? This is still a bad position for Jason. Like, I have no question about it. Where. I mean, effectively, Wesley is about a knockoff and a half from being able to win this one. But, you know, that's exactly what Zorark does, which is play really grindy games, really grindy matchups, find ways to win with its single copy inclusions, its energy denial, its hand disruption, everything in between. And we might see that here. One thing to note with Mr. Mime as well, you know, we, 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 I'm going back to Mr. Mime here because I've been thinking about, you know, why this card was, was, uh, was benched here. But with counter energy, Mr. Mime has an attack of his own that can actually one-shot a Hitmonchan that's with right. Cybolt, or I think it's what it's called there, for 40 damage. Yes. Uh, yep. So that's another idea here that we may have overlooked with Jason's deck here while Mr. Mime is uh, there for the bench effect. He's no stranger to being a non ES attacker against his Hitmonchan, Hitmonchan deck. Yeah, and then we go even deeper with that inclusion because with – Ooh. Oh, what do we have here? Guzma so we here got Guzma on the, for the Zerua. That has a double colorless energy on it as well. Oh, man. So that's instantly instantly a fallback for uh, for Wesley right there. Good response. And at the same time, all those resources going away on Jason's side. Wesley pulling further and further ahead right now. And with that damage on Oracorio, we could see here if Jason does end up pulling some sort of um, comeback here in this game. Wesley has an Oracorio on his side of the field as well. So if those Zeruas do not evolve, Oracorio can easily supernatural dance to that beat there, take two on Oracorio on active, and then finish the damage off on the Zerua on bench. Right. Uh, on Jason's turn right now, he does promote the Oracorio with that double colorless energy, and he looks like he's eyeing down a rescue stretcher uh, or the enhanced hammer. Yeah, and I could see the enhanced hammer being a good play combined with a knockout in this scenario, but... Again, the yeah, and so we've we've got Jason holding on to those cards, eyeing those cards. He's considering the strategy for later, but opting not to do it right now. I think it's really just going to come down to one of those end to one scenarios. That might be the best opportunity Jason has to pull a comeback in this game. And the one is going to have to be big here for Jason as well. And right now, Wesley, the way he, with how he's been drawing, uh, no stranger to the solid top decks, hitting these float stones and each of these, and the teammates, all these different pieces that he needs here. And right now, I think he is eyeing down those end plays, playing each of his cards in his hands and slowly uh, uh, giving his best chances and outs to hit the cards he needs if he does get into a low hand. 
Strong energy coming down to the hit launch him. Gonna set up for that magnum punch attack as well. Another different option that he can use to KO. Um, and if you know, hit and run does just do enough. And you know what? I really like this end play right here for a couple reasons. First, it's obviously disruptive to Jason's start, Jason's planning that he has right now after building up a couple cards. But in addition to that, it preempts Jason's own end to a certain extent. It's going to make it a little bit harder for Jason to just and Wesley back. So it's almost like saying, hey, you know what? I see what you're doing, so I want to go ahead and just respond in kind before you get a chance to. Absolutely here. And the two on Wesley's side. And the four for Jason. Hit and run. Coming in, taking a knockout and promoting the Bide Barricade Wobbuffet on Jason's side. Special charge. Going to bring back two double colors energy to his deck. However, does he have any draw support or any way to get out of this end situation? Can he prevent Wesley from taking his final knockout of the game? With that card combination, I just don't see it because he needed some sort of mix between oh hand disruption and hand disruption and cards to attack with. He has those cards to attack with now, but he does not. I mean, of course, we're seeing it go away right now, the dowsing machine mm -hmm. getting rid of both N and a Via Seeker. But at the same time, we don't have that hand disruption happening simultaneously. Instead, if Jason wants to be able to disrupt Wesley's setup, he would need it right away. Big so. turn here, though. He's gonna, he did find a counter catcher through that dowsing machine. Going to attach the double close energy here and take a knockout. He needs one more bench Pokemon, however, to knock oh, out this uh, oh, hitbox chance. So this trade, trade is huge. Ultra Ball oh, he has Ultra off the Ball. trade. Oh, this is it, so it, risky, though. So he has a knockout, but he's going to lose his entire hand. In that combination right there, and that chain of events, we saw an end. Two Via Seekers get pitched, yep. and all of that just to be able to get a knockout right now. And the rough thing, one of the worst things here for Jason's situation is that that watch and learn pseudo Wudo can normally be so good, but because... The odds of Wesley being able to pull a game-winning knockout right now are so high, it's not even going to be relevant. So we have Wesley not hesitating at all, via Big, Seekering for via that Guzma, Guzma flashing for the, the game. Prize. And this is over right here. This round 11 of the regional championships here in Hartford, Connecticut. Wow. Okay. Hitmonchan's Wesley's at a great spot right now. Hitmonchan's at a great spot there. And it's funny because I remember walking through the tables uh, throughout the middle rounds yesterday and seeing it kind of in the middle tables. Not, not a very lot uh, in the top tables there. Maybe one or two. Uh, Wesley being one of them. So I was a little hesitant on his position in the format. But it's here strong today. Able to handle the Zorak deck handily. Not traditional Zorak. Give it that, but yeah. still handle it uh, very well here. Even end himself to two and still hit the Guzma and strong energy piece for the game on a last Zerua. So, um, outside of great play, also very optimal draw on Wesley's side. Very true, and I think that that's a big part of the reason why we saw a bit of vengeance from Hitmonchan as opposed to round nine yesterday, where mm -hmm. we saw a pseudo version of the same matchup, only slightly different Zorark variation. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, the draws were big. And to be honest and to be fair to Wesley with such a simple concept, with such a simple setup, Hitmonchan and Hit and Run should be able to draw into those cards. So it's been maybe some poor luck for Hitmonchan players not to be drawing as well. But with the field saturated with a bunch of fighting weak decks, I think it's in a much better position now. So it looks like we have a winner interview coming up, so stay tuned. Here we are back round 11 with your round 11 winner, Wesley Tam, piloting that Hitmonchan Wob deck. Uh, let's talk about your deck a little bit here while we have a second. Um, I noticed a couple interesting inclusions in your list from that kind of uh, stray away from the traditional Hitmonchan list. Uh, you play a couple different counter cards here. I want you to kind of help explain here. Um, big notable here, Kecleon. 
Yep. Walk us through that card inclusion for us. Uh, so Kecleon is good against uh, Jolteon, which can use a uh, Flash Ray, which prevents basics, which the whole deck is from uh, hitting it with damage. So Kecleon can actually copy Swift, and with the Choice Band and Shrine, you end up doing a lot of damage to Jolteon. So it's not really an out to the deck in Pika Realm. Uh, Kecleon also copies uh, Trash Lunch Garbodor, which is very good. You know, it copies <laughs> their typing too, so if they're not under ability lock, you become psychic, so three items and you knock out the Trash Lance Garbodor. I love the inclusion, love the inclusion there. We also see Oracorio, Nihilego, Shaman. These are all different counter cards here. So you kind of have a Hitmachin Wob with some counter yeah. attackers here. So what led you to including those cards? Um, well, the deck's very uh, flexible in the sense where it's the one energy attacker in Hitmachin and, you know, Prism Energy expanded. Mm -hmm. A lot of basic Pokemon can use that energy. So just that fact lets you play around with the deck and include a lot more tech Pokemons for certain matchups. Definitely. Now, we did see one of the tech Pokemon here, Kartana GX, being yeah. uh, one of the big, uh, the last piece you needed for the Game 1 win yep. uh, or earlier in that game right now. Uh, but there's a lot of other things that happened there in Game 1 between having the Shrine Ticks and taking key knockouts yeah, sure. there. Um, one thing I want to note is during that game, uh, you got Enlo. Mm -hmm. And you're still able to p the pivot out, out of that point there. So, did you? How did you feel about your different, uh, you know, counts left in the deck there after that end that happened? Um, yeah, the problem with the deck is that sometimes you just draw poorly, just because mm -hmm. um, a lot of Pokemon, a lot of uh, tools and items that aren't always useful in certain situations. But because I had the Oranguru out, uh, yep. and I know he didn't have a Trubbish, so there's no ability lock. So at any point, if he did enemy low, I can just draw and hopefully just. You know, let the shrine take away, and eventually, if I draw a verse seeker or teammates, I'm back in the game, even if I'm in low. Absolutely, there. One thing to note there in that game too, there, there was a point there where you were advanced in the stadium war, and you opted to ultra ball one of the shrines away. I yep. did see a shrine in hand there, <laughs> but uh, were there any point that you were kind of worried that he'd be able to bump it easily with the sky field and beat you in the stadium count? Uh, no, because he had a lot of basics on the board, and uh, he was not drawing very well, especially with the wob active. So even when I played that last shrine, uh, it was because uh, if I used a buzzwall to attack at any point, he would have to play another stadium to be able to one shot the buzzwall. Um, and then, you know, I didn't worry about him wiping three GXs off the board just because there's a Ranguru, it's weak to fighting, mm -hmm. uh, there's still a Zorua, and because he took a prize there on that four prize turn, and he had 11 card hand, um, even if I end myself at two, I have the Ranguru, and I have a Wobbuff active, so the likelihood of him not drawing an out to that is mm -hmm. a lot more likely. Absolutely there. So let's talk about your, your reasoning behind his deck right now. I mean, you, you, you leaned on him much in Wob. Um, and it actually, the field is flooded with fighting weak Pokemon right yeah, now. So, sure. you, know, you know, talk about your decision making on this deck and also how you feel about your rest of your day. Yeah, uh, I was testing like Zoropod for most of the week or Toad Pod, and then mm -hmm. I just said, oh, people aren't going to play item lock, so I cut Ranger from the deck, which was a good choice. And then I expected like Picaram, Zorogarb, Archies. And so basically, um, my day one yesterday, Swiss, I played six Picaroms in a row. Yeah, so that, that's Wait, basically what I'm six, six in a row? I, I got a no-show, and then I played six Picaroms in a row. Talk about an amazing gift here in Hartford. Yeah, Get for blessed sure. with the fighting weakness decks. <laughs> yep. That is amazing. So yeah. six Picaroms. Go ahead and continue. Uh, six Picaroms, and then uh, I lost to one of them. Actually, got O2'd. But then my last two rounds, I played against uh, Trevenant, and he knew what I was playing, so he didn't want to take the tie. So that's an <laughs> auto-loss matchup. And then my last round was Night March, but we just uh, tied at the end. Perfect, perfect here. Well, you're in a great position here going into day two now. Mm -hmm. Feels flooded with a lot of fighting, very weak decks right now, so I'm sure you're excited to get back out there oh, yeah. and, uh, and play against the rest of the field. Oh, We're going to sure. take a second here and uh, slide back over to our team right now, but congrats again on the round 11 victory, much. and good luck to you the rest of the tournament. Thanks.